Hey you guys, new jet tags are live on our store right now so you can rep your favorite engine. We've got the RB25, RB26, and a bunch more. The link is in the description. Welcome back to Roads Untraveled, you guys. My name is Marcus, as always, and today is a little bit of a special video, okay? As you can see behind me, we've got two very special cars. So the question for today really is, uh, can you actually be both a old school American muscle fan as well as have love for the insanely modified Japanese stuff, okay? RB25, baby! Woo! <laughs> Um, so these are Jeff's cars. How's it going, Jeff? Good, good. Hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just going for a rip. What, first weekend of 2019? Yeah. So I thought, what better way to give uh, Marcus a shout and, you know, pull him out and let's go play some cars. No, I appreciate <laughs> it. I'm like, I'm I'm never going to say no yeah. to you offering to let me drive either of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've done a few things, though. On uh, which one do you want to start with? Yeah. Um, Okay, for let's let's give you start guys with the Nova, I guess. We did yeah. just do a quick video on uh, on the 240. Let's give you guys a breakdown on this. So, 1972 Chevy Nova. Um, it's a real rally edition Nova mm -hmm. that I bought. I'd say almost 10 years ago now. Um, it was kind of my first muscle car getting into. I was kind of in the bodywork and paint department. Um, so, restored the body myself. I repainted it the original color. Um, lucky enough, actually had in a box in the trunk, I guess the original owner back in the 80s bought these rally stripes. So the original stripes of the car back when GM still sold them. So, mm -hmm. you know, some of you guys are familiar with NOS or new old stock parts. It's, uh, the, the, you know, it's cool to say that these are true GM stripes. So you, um, you get these, you order these from GM? Yeah, yeah. So these were actually in boxes with GM part numbers on them. Oh, wow. Yeah, so cool. like it is a cool. true rally Nova. So it was cool that you, I actually had the original white stripes that I could put back on the car because yeah. the old ones when I took them off, off Obviously, weren't weren't reusable. No, no. Um, low miles. It's got well, like fifty thousand original miles on it. Interior, carpet, headliner. Most of that stuff is still mm -hmm. all original. Um, up to last year, even the suspension bushings were original. So that's why it was kind of a little washy and you know, right, right. really old school way of, uh, of driving a car. But did they did they ever sell the um, the Rally Nova in Canada? Yes. So uh, oh, okay. they, they weren't manufactured in Canada. This one was built in California. Right. Um, lucky enough, I actually. Have both build sheets to the car too so like when the factory assembles it you kind of get the rpo codes on what the car came with disc brakes suspension modifications you know engine upgrades whatever so mm -hmm. i have actually both build sheets to the car which is cool um and it was sold at a dealership up north in vernon like that's where it was designated to ship to and sold so mm -hmm. cool to say also that it's retained its whole life in british columbia oh cool right? yeah yeah no way yep so small block chevy the engine itself as far as i can tell with like the codes on it are out of a um, early 70s Z28. So it's a 350 cubic inch that I punched 30 over, so 355. Um, it has a forged steel crank in it, good rods, um, forged flat top pistons. Um, it's, nothing much like on the inside has been internally done other than like good balancing um, right blueprinting if some people like to you know over overuse that term blueprinting but it's been you know blueprinted and measured and squared up um, 202 160 camel hump heads if you guys are familiar with like the old camel hump heads and um, camel hump heads what does that even mean <laughs> yeah well okay these two humps here, Teach I don't me, know. yeah so <laughs> these two humps here I guess they they just eventually caught on the name they called them camel hump heads so the double humps oh I see okay um, so it's just an easy way to kind of recognize recognize what is actually right so like on. most of the double hump or camel hump heads were a 202 intake valve 160 exhaust valve okay and, you know like smaller chambers 64 cc stuff the compression right um it's got a pretty gnarly hydraulic flat tappet camshaft in it. I think I've been through three or four camshafts now just to find that like specific distinct muscle car sound that mm -hmm. I want. And mm -hmm. also, you know, deliver the power or the power band that I'm looking for and that works well with the car with the weight of it, the automatic transmission, the rear gears. Yeah. Um, it's so much louder than I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> That's honestly though, when you roll up the windows, oh, yeah. it's pretty quiet. quiet definitely. It's yeah. really quiet. And then when you roll it down, immediately you you get that like nice idle. Yeah, and you, you know. should hear it from when you're outside of it. It just sounds awesome. 
awesome, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It has to do with, like, again, old school racing headers. It's got super long tube headers, um, two and a half inch exhaust, and the mufflers. The mufflers took me probably a whole winter of searching on eBay because I wanted to find specific the old Flowmaster original 40s. Mm -hmm. So not the newer, you know, super 44s and stuff like that. I wanted right. to kind of find the, the original 40s are an older design and they kind of have a good muscle car bark to it. So, you know, I opted and uh, luckily enough found two of those. But, but seriously, though, like, is it possible to have an engine like this yeah. sound bad? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're an enthusiast and a you know a true muscle car yeah. lover, I mean, probably yeah. not. No. A really well worked carburetor. It's got Holly. Got it. It's got a Holly 750. Um, and for you guys, I guess who are getting into you know maybe you've never really tuned carburetors before. You got yourself you know a carbureted engine. Invest in what's called a wide band, so an O2 or a wide band setup. Um, it's kind of a no-brainer nowadays. Almost every performance car has them. Yeah. So I bunged both exhaust headers so I could, you know, switch the O2 sensor from each bank because sometimes, you know, with manifold designs and stuff, you might have to do a little bit of cross-jetting to balance out your air-fuel ratios. Mm -hmm. But basically, you can dial in, you know, that's, you know, also why the car is so responsive and the drivability of it is so good is because the air-fuel ratios are always spot on. You know, I was, idle, oh, yeah. the transition mm -hmm. from the idle circuit to like the cruising circuit and then also your wide open throttle. Um, you know, you might have like a bog or a hiccup or a hesitation and you have no idea what it is. Old school guys are pulling out spark plugs and smelling them and, you know, <laughs> yeah. the old school ways to do it. Well, I can just look at my wide band and, oh, it goes super lean or, oh, it goes super rich. Okay. And then you have a, a, exactly. something to work off of. So, you know, that's... So it's so it's got like obviously it still retains a lot of factory stuff but it's you've got the drivability and you've actually got you can manage stuff as if it was like a modern tuned car absolutely you know that's right that's right so I, it's again the interior is all original the carpets the seat covers the headliner um, the only thing that's different obviously are the gauges um, those took me almost two years to collect those so I found one of them they're called Smith's gauges and they're an old old gauges from like the s mid 60s or so oh yeah and okay they're used on like MG's and triumphs and when I saw one at the swap meet I was like I knew I had to have those a matching full set yeah so I collected a whole bunch of them um, the wide band I just kind of hide in here now obviously that's where like the cigarette lighter went. I know it's nothing fancy and don't, well, yeah, it's like, don't show everyone that, that, that plate and stuff, but I did it like, you know, just as a, a quick thing and I just haven't taken it out because it, it serves its purpose. It serves a purpose, yeah. Work, so. <laughs> it is it is weird to see AEM like yep. on the on the yeah. inside of the Nova. <laughs> I know, but... I know. Here I'll like I'll show you how the gauges move. Okay, yeah, definitely. We'll do a quick fire up and just I'll show you. It's, it's By the way, you guys, I've got a big smile on my face because we just drove from Jeff's place here and I got to drive the Nova. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. So, again, a vacuum gauge that helps when you're doing some drivability tuning, but I mean, like, most of the stuff is, is on the wide band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is really, like, people might think that I'm exaggerating, but it really does drive, it, like you were saying, in terms of, like, just coming on and off throttle, or you gotta, like, yeah. punch the throttle quickly. Right. It really does drive very similar and, like, smooth, like a, either a properly tuned modified car, or, right. a, a, like, a factory modern car. Modern car, that's right. Yep. It's, it's all, super I, I, again, a lot of things have to do with, like, the torque converter, so it's got a 3,500 stall converter, which allows the engine to rev up a little bit easier. Okay. Um, and then before the converter really locks up or tightens up, it's not up until, like, the higher RPM, so, right. again, that helps the motor, like, whip up and rev up a little bit smoother, but, again, Again, it all works together as like a package, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's one of those things I put so much work and hard work and time and, you know, sanding and sanding and sanding. You don't realize how long it takes to restore a body, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, this kind of caliber until you do it. You know, you right. block sand, you block sand, you block sand, you primer, you block sand, and you eventually want to kill yourself. <laughs> so, and you're only, and as they say, you want to kill yourself and quit, and you're only halfway there. Right, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. That's, that's how it works. But you've got to finish it, like, you that's know. Right. Yeah. Old school 14 inch mags. Those are like original, you know, they were era 70s correct. And you know, I put a cool pinstripe on them and stuff. Yep. Um, yep. When we last did the video, I had bias ply Firestone tires, really like giving it that era correct look. Yep, I remember. Um, so I came across a good deal on the on the radials, and I was, you know, I, I, at the time I said, sure, let's just throw them on for for you know for a season. And I understand now why tire manufacturers went from, you know, bias plies to a steel belted radial tire. <laughs> like these things handle so much better. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what I was originally thinking before, other than it looked cool. It gave it that like day two is what I was saying in the, the last video. That mm -hmm. day two era correct. Of course. You know, could look to it. So. Of course. Yeah. 
Other than that, it's like performance wise, it's got polyurethane bushings that I put into it over the winter time. So energy suspension polyurethane bushings, which help tremendously with like the way it drives and stuff, like you were saying, how mm -hmm. you know how nice and smooth it feels. Even when you're hitting bumps and stuff, it's not as super washy as it no. used to be. Again, probably because the old original bushings were like falling out of the thing too. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. That doesn't help either. Yeah. But and it's not honestly, it's not like a, a mushy ride at all. No. Nope. It's very you can feel, you know, little dips and imper imperfections in the road and that's stuff. Right, it's, that's right. It's Again, actually... that's with the package, the rally package though came with. It's called an F40 suspension package. So front disc brakes, front large sway bar. It's got a, um, a Nova SS rear sway bar, but also, which also helps. And then the multi-leaf leaf springs. Oh, so right. It's kind of got like the performance suspension package in it, right? Yeah. Jeff, what is this? <laughs> what, what is this? <laughs> well, well, we had a little bit of fun, you know, in the summertime. Um, it seems like the coffee meets out here tend to um, you know, stir up some adrenaline. Yeah, if you guys don't, here. if you guys are from Langley or Surrey or at, honestly anywhere in the lower mainland in the summertime, every Friday come down to, well, not all of you, but like. Well, don't say where though, right? <laughs> you know what? To, no, 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 we kind of got to like, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah you, you, can, okay. you can inbox them for uh, <laughs> details on where it is. That's a good, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's starting to better. get a little out of hand. You know, we're starting to get people lining up on the streets in, in lawn chairs and stuff just to who, watch burnouts. To watch burnouts, you know, and the, the police are obviously starting to catch on. So yeah. we definitely have to be careful and, you know, be smart about it because we can eventually lose that privilege. But yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> some weeks you'll see they'll be busting people and yeah. then other weeks it seems they kind of just like let it go. Let it go, yeah. And they're like, hey, you know, everyone's kind of, no one's doing like something that would be, like no one's doing donuts. Right. And like endangering the direct. Other people, yeah, or yeah, pedestrians. So. I mean, it's still dangerous and stupid. Yeah. But, like. <laughs> and like by the end of the summertime, it looks like a landing strip there. It's, yeah. it, it's unreal, yeah. the amount of rubber that's laid yeah. on the, the ash. So. It's definitely my favorite uh, weekly meet uh, in the lower mainland. Of course, for yeah, sure. that's the kind best. of the place to go to. Yep. Nova, Rally Nova. Thank you again, Jeff, for letting me drive your cars. This is like mind blown. <laughs> Lots of power. This thing's very healthy, very strong. Oh, it's a good day. It's a good day to be a Canadian. It's a very thin, dainty steering wheel, dare I say. <laughs> but it's very, you know, it's very responsive for a 73 muscle car. Like, that does nothing. But. It is pretty responsive. Very roomy in here, it's got heat. You know, it's nice and warm, the windows go up, everything works. There's not much to it, honestly. It's an engine, a differential, and four wheels and tires. That's literally all it is. It's fast. It's it's not as fast as the RB25 240. Obviously not. That thing is uh, it's a lot lighter. It's got that like turbo kick to it. There's a lot more drama, but there's a lot of drama with this too. Oh god, that is a Chevy SSR. But no, this does have a lot of drama still. It's very um, it's got like an animal kind of vibe about it. You know, it's a lot louder than I remember. Like when you get on it, this thing roars. To me, this is basically the best representation that I've driven. This and the Kuda I drove are the two best representations of a true American car that I've ever driven. Like the most true to an American car, you know? That sound never gets old. I will own, mark my words, my next car will not be a carbureted V8. I can pretty much guarantee, but one day I will own a big American muscle car with a carbureted V8 because you simply cannot beat the sound, you cannot beat the feel, you cannot beat the presence on the road. Like an RB25 240 drift car gets a lot of looks on the road with like a full cage and everything, but this gets way more thumbs up and like smiles, everyone just enjoys it, you know?
Um, other than that, performance-wise, I mean, it's got an electric fuel pump and a sump on it. Mm -hmm. That helps huge because I don't drive the car very often, so I wired in like just a, a Holly electric fuel pump, and it's got a sump on it. So I yep. literally, you can flick the key um, after it's been sitting for, you know, for as l however long as it is, and it'll start right up. So transmission, turbo 350, 3500 stall. Um, for you guys who like to, you know, take things apart, figure out how they work and put them back together, I highly advise you take apart an automatic transmission. Right. Um, that was, you know, that was uh, a job on its own. I mean, I probably had three workbenches lined out full of parts and I actually went to school. That's why I was kind of doing some paint, paint uh -huh. schooling and I come back after school and I, you know, come back to a table full of parts and I'm scratching my head because I don't remember how it all went, you know, oh, came apart. Yeah. So buy yourself a good manual. You can get manuals on how to like build them and how to modify them to make them better, mm -hmm. um, shift better you know work for more horsepower and stuff so yeah. some internal modifications I did inside to make it shift a little bit better but a good thing to look into what's called the governor system so the governor inside your automatic transmission is what determines your shift points when you're in the drive position so mm. you know a lot of times if you haven't touched it you might you know throttle to put the pedal to the floor and it's gonna shift at you know 4500 in first and maybe 4800 in second but that's not kind of the power range of the car so you can buy weight and spring kits to kind of adjust it it takes a few times to you know, messing around. Okay. But now I can put the thing in drive, set it, forget it, put the pedal through the firewall, and it'll shift at like the 6100 RPM and 62 on, and, you know, second to third. Rev to 62, eh? Yeah, yeah we can we'll definitely watch it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't go much higher than that. It's You can no, feel yeah. kind of when it starts to fall over, and that's, you know, the RPM range or the valve yeah. springs are kind of at their float limit. But, yeah. but yeah. oh yeah, yeah, it'll rev to six grand, 62, wow. 6300. Which do you like better? <laughs> oh man, it's hard to say. <laughs> I say this. This is my all-time. This is yeah. This is you put yeah. so much hard work and effort into an old-school car. I always dreamed of having a Camaro, but the Nova came about, and I don't know something about the color. You know what's hilarious about the gold? Bugs get attracted to it so much. You can see all the bugs. Oh the yeah, what the heck? It. So if you're in, <laughs> yeah, they think it's like you know pollen and flowers. And yeah. So you get lots of bugs. All right, shall we move on to the 240? Yeah, let's do it. So I bought kind of the shell of it, as I like explained in one of the previous videos, their Roads Untraveled made. Um, Brody Goble was the one who kind of built the complete car, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a running, driving car at one time, competed a little bit, the cage, all that stuff was already done, suspension-wise as well. Um, put away, because he built another car. So I basically got it off him, was super stoked to actually get into like the Japanese scene. It was always my dream to get into an S chassis. And, yeah. Um, there, behold, was like a car that most of the hard work was already done. So it was, I guess, bringing it back to its former glory, if not better. Mm -hmm. um, paint work was done myself. Most of the body panels were still okay condition. Some of the, the, the fenders and stuff were cracked in the bumper. So I did have to do some fiberglass work and you know, right. took the time and repainted the car properly inside and out. Ha it was already set up for an RB25. The RB26 intake you know, uh, design and stuff was already done on that, mm -hmm. that part. So again, this RB25 in it, it was already pre-built. All I did was swap the intake you know, had a turbo made for it, did some, you know, minor modifications to it, um, ran it like that. And then, you know, after beating on it pretty hard, you, I like to take things apart, put them together. So I kind of got a little nerdy when it comes to RV motors and mm -hmm. even got down to, I had a spare block, an RV block that was, it was trash. You couldn't reuse it anymore. So I actually ended up like drilling into the block in some spots and cutting it up in sections to find. Oh yeah. You were telling me yeah, about Yeah. Just that. to find how the oiling system works now, everything kind of you know, works together because yeah. there is, you know, common issues with RB engines that a lot of people know of. I figured out how it all ticks and I'm <laughs> super stoked. So any of you guys out there that, you know, want some minor, you know, let's say finish assembly on your RBs, let's say you got your short, uh, short block built and your head needs assembling or it needs to be put together. I can definitely help you out. I've acquired a lot of tools. Um, I can degree cams, you know, set up valve lash. Mm -hmm. I do have some, like I said, minor modifications that I like to do to, improve on Nissan's original design. I'm not saying it was a bad design. There are some flaws, but there are some things that I can, you know, that I found I can improve on. Absolutely, yeah. So. And that's quite the luxury to be able to cut up a, uh, or, you know, to look inside and to right. actually see how this was engineered and then be like, okay, well, Maybe I could try this out and if That's right. something flows better, something works better. Yep, more oiling to like some of the crank mains and stuff like that. And the oil drain backs are the, definitely a huge, huge thing as well. Yeah. I think, uh, I think Jeff, my next car might, might have an RB25. 
I don't 26, know. 26, it will be RB powered. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, when this video is done, you know, hit the link below. We're going to start a GoFundMe fund <laughs> for Marcus here <laughs> and let's get him into an RB powered car. Yeah, the sooner the better. <laughs> no, I'm not doing a GoFundMe, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow, every time the engine, actually, we're, we're at Chevron filling the cars up uh, and there was a uh, Camaro ZL1 1LE. Yeah. And they were going nuts, nuts. over this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is how the car should be, in my opinion. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. I mean, even the SRs, I mean, I've never SRs really dug nice. into like the SR mm -hmm. motors as well. Those are a very like bulletproof engine that you can get very good horsepower and reliability out of. But yes. Yeah. yeah I don't know. It just, it, when I got the car, it, it had the, the RB in it, and I just wanted to keep it. You can go with the extended crank collar. We can get a little technical here. The crank collar um, uh, for the oil pump or the crankshaft. Even after a season, I had an extended crank collar and an N1 pump. After one season, I pulled the pump apart. There already was some fracturing happening on the oil pump drive. Oh, gears. really? Like it's, it's almost inevitable, especially if you have a really hard cut rev limiter. Right. That's again, one thing that I've implemented in the link. I have turned the rev cut down a little bit too. That Microtech was extremely hard on the way it cut. So that creates a lot of harmonics in the crankshaft. Mm -hmm. um, so now I've gone to a um, spline drive setup. It's not cheap, but shout out to Supertech for um, you know designing those. They're they're pretty new out in the market. Spool also makes one as well. Um, I think it's it's definitely a no-brainer. You put so much money into an, an engine, and you're relying on an oil pump. I mean, the next step obviously would be a dry sump system, but yeah, that's a huge dollar. And I don't drive the car to need a dry sump system. No, right? exactly. That's a lot when you get a lot of exactly. G-force and a lot of slosh in the pan. Yeah. So it's been bored. One mil over, so we're currently at 87 millimeter. Weisco Forge Pistons, Eagle Rods. Um, I acquired a torque plate, an RB engine torque plate. So again, for you guys, you know, local guys out there that are getting your blocks machined and the machine shop doesn't have a torque plate. So again, it simulates the cylinder head being torqued onto the block. So when you're finished honing your bores, your bores stay true and round because the oh. bores do distort after you torque your cylinder head on. It's been proven, it's kind of new technology. Wow, okay. I, mean, I wouldn't say it's really new, but you know, in the past sure, yeah. few years or so, that's what everyone's using are torque plates. I did not know that. I have one for rent. If you guys want to use one, it's probably one of the <laughs> few around in the area that, that have them. Cool. And I also have a, a head gasket to suit as well because you want to manipulate the cylinder head being torqued in the block mm -hmm. as much as possible, right? Of course, Use of your course. same head studs, the same head torque. Ideally, the same head gasket you're going to use. Even the torque plate, they say it should be the same thickness as your cylinder head and of the same similar alloy. So it is a, uh, an aluminum mm -hmm. torque plate. The head itself, just super tech valve train, titanium retainers, nothing special there. Some port and polish work. Um, obviously, the RB26 ITB and intake setup. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I think it just looks awesome. People are always so confused. When they know their RBs well, they go, it's in the RB25, but it's a 26, so what exactly is it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So shout out to Axel, man, putting, uh, you know, the design together and actually getting it on, uh, making it work. Uh, but yeah, stock camshafts. I had a set of regrinds in it last year. And yeah. you know, I also had the regrinds in it when I was breaking in the motor. But uh, if we want to get technical talk again, when companies regrind camshafts, you're regrinding a camshaft, a stock camshaft to actually in the end get more duration and more lift to actually get a performance camshaft in the end. Mm -hmm. When you do so, um, you're essentially grinding off what's called the base circle of the camshaft. So the heel of the lobe, if you want to, you know, okay. simple terms. So yeah. the heel of the lobe actually gets smaller because then in turn it actually increases gets taller. the lift, right? right? Now in a solid lifter head setup, I mean, you can shim to suit and it's going to be okay. But in a hydraulic lifter head, um, you need that base circle to compress your hydraulic lifters. They need a certain amount of preload. Mm -hmm. So when you eliminate that preload, you just end up getting noisy valve train, a lot of funny harmonics, and it just, it wasn't working for me. Uh, 6166 Borg Turbo, it's a T4, divided T4. Um, Great turbo. Chris, Spectrum Motorsports, put that together. Billet wheel, nothing too fancy on it. It's just a, an oil cooled, it's not even water cooled turbo. Uh, Nissan Quest alternator. So I found mm. it right up online. So it's, it's out of a Quest van. It's a 140 amp alternator. This isn't your first, you also had an R32 GTR for a minute, didn't you? Right, so that was a, that was short lift. That was my first RB that I ever built again from like, you know, block up. I didn't get into yeah. so much detail as I did with this. You eventually learn. The Skyline price is going up and that thing was now able to import into the States. Yep. Um, I was ready to move on. This thing kind of came up and I was like, I can't also build this and keep the Skyline as well, so. <laughs> it's it's stripped and it's caged. Yeah, it's basic. <laughs> the cage, I mean, again, it was the car was built years ago by, you know, a bunch of younger guys. I, I if I had the opportunity to and the tools to build a car like this when I was younger, 
I sure as hell would have did it with my buddy. So. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. the, the welding yeah. and stuff is questionable. I mean, I really wouldn't want to roll over in this thing because it might be <laughs> a little bit scary. So, you know, I do drive this thing cautiously, and I, if I do decide to keep the car, then I'll eventually, you know, recage it with yeah. some, you know, newer chromoly steel and have it done, you know, really well. The dash, the gauges, and stuff. Again, we're already done. Um, it needed some overhauling in the wiring. Can you actually? enjoy fully enjoy and like <laughs> genuinely love both kind of categories of cars um i've always been in the mindset like absolutely because i want to i want to have as many automotive different automotive experiences throughout my life as humanly possible right um and you're doing a good job at it I, yeah. i'd like to think so yeah, yeah. i mean the fuel prices you know? are what sucks so you'd almost want to own something old as a toy you know and mm -hmm. I mean? something mm -hmm. nice as if you restore it back to its original condition and if you're lucky enough to get you know collector plates the insurance is extremely cheap um, it can't be modified you know to a, it has to retain a certain amount of originality yeah. in order to get the luxury of having you know collector plate insurance like they offer here yeah um, dirt cheap by dirt the way cheap. yeah <laughs> hey, you also ha need to have another car fully insured in order to retain your it's collector very true. plates in your car that's so, very true yeah. and do not try to cheat the system with collector there's plates of like driving it every day because no. you're not going to get away with it. <laughs> Definitely not. There's a lot of there's a lot of car guys out here and uh, they'll, they'll catch on really quickly, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. you want to like sure. I kind of talked as much as I could about the car. Yeah. If you hop in yeah. the 240, I'll follow you in the in the Nova. Yeah. And we'll just like blast around. We'll keep it civil. And uh, we will keep it civil. <laughs> yeah, we'll just go for a little cruise, hit the flats. All right, you guys going for a rip once again in the 240. Jeff's a very kind gentleman letting me drive his cars today. Got the Nova over there. Sounding mean as hell. All right. Bismo two-way diff. The seat is a fixed seat, so that's why I haven't, I can't move it. And Jeff's taller than me, so, uh, back to hit the clutch it kind of sucks but no excuse no excuse for not driving this car rb25 baby Woo. <laughs> nothing like an incredibly light chassis uh, about 2,800 pounds for this car with about you know over 500 horsepower at the crank about 470 480-ish at, at the wheels all right we got a straight coming up here You don't really realize how loud it is till you shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you guys, hopefully you enjoyed this quick, uh, quick little video, quick little rip with Jeff and his two cars. Um, yeah, that's about it. I mean, really, realistically, I'm not gonna really have any time to shoot anything before we head down to LA. Grayson and I are heading down there very shortly in about a week from now. So if you are in the LA area, hit us up, uh, Marcus at roadsandtravel.com uh, if you wanna shoot something. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's a good send off. Uh, say goodbye to Canada for now with uh, two of probably my favorite cars I've ever driven, to be honest. Uh, and I'm not just sucking up, Jeff. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. They're Thank pretty you. sick. So thanks, uh, thanks for bringing them out. No problem. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys very shortly.